want to talk a little recruiting here to finish up our number one. Jeremy Ellis, you got some good news with the commitment of Tyree Adams over the weekend. The St. Aug product uh, is a a four-star. And what have we been talking about with Brian Kelly, offensive lineman? He fits mm-hmm. the mold to a T. He is 6'5". He is 285 pounds. They will put some weight on that huge frame. And this is a guy that was being recruited by Florida, by Alabama. I mean, some of the big boys were coming in here to try to get him out of St. Aug. LSU has done great at St. Aug over the years, and they continue to do so there with Tyree Adams, who comes into the, to the class. Yeah, uh, Coach Kelly's doing it by the day for me. That All those concerns or those worries that we may not be able to recruit the state of Louisiana, recruit by recruit, we're getting it done. So um, as we start to see more and more guys from the state commit, um, I, I think that's a great sign. And again, the guy, like you said, fits that mold. Um, you don't want those big 345-pound maulers anymore. You want guys who can be able to move in space and, and be athletic. And I think you know uh, he fits that mold perfectly. Uh, a really athletic guy, big kid, long arms, and uh, if he can put some weight on, I definitely think he can be an SEC lineman. Look, you, you have for years now seen the Alabama logo attached to some LSU, from some Louisiana guys. Texas A&M has come in here in the Jimbo era and, and recruited the state pretty hard. You're going to see that. Uh, and now you're going to see the, that Florida Gator logo on these guys' recruiting profiles far more often. My hope is that they continue to whiff, that Florida keeps whiffing in the state of Louisiana and pulls their resources out of there. Now, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon because Jabbar Jaluk is New Orleans. I mean, that guy is, is, is a, a New Orleans lifer, mm-hmm. and so he's going to continue to work there. Corey Raymond has been in this state for a very, very long time. We understand that Rob Sales, their offensive coordinator, played at LSU. He's got ties to L, to uh, to Louisiana, and we know Billy Napier is going to to use his relationships in the state as well. But if they continue to whiff on guys in the state, my hope is they'll pull the reins back a little bit and focus on on their home base because we don't need Florida in here. We got enough people <laughs> coming around, and, and Florida was yeah. certainly in the mix for Tyree Adams, um, and LSU was able to to win there. I mean, do you have significant concerns that Brian Kelly won't be able to recruit the state of Louisiana? I I don't. No, I, I don't think so at all. And I think the people that he's brought on this staff, uh, it's going to help him tremendously uh, in that in, in that regard. I, I think if he tried to, you know, go with a lot of national-based guys with no ties to Louisiana, but seeing the way he put together this staff, uh, even the guys helping in the recruiting and, and bringing back former players, um, I, I think he's going to do a phenomenal job recruiting the, recruiting the state. Now, as you're seeing with this recruiting class, um, I know I had some concerns early on like everyone else, but – uh, as we go, I think he can find a spot in this top 10, which I think is really impressive for our first real uh, full season recruiting here at LSU. For me, like, I think sometimes people just complain for complaining's sake is is kind of the way that I, I read things at times. And that's kind of where I was on this he can't recruit the state of Louisiana thing. Um, yes, if you look at the top players in the state of Louisiana – and you just take it as a snapshot for what it is, you would say, man, LSU's getting their butt kicked in the state of Louisiana. But if you if you analyze the entirety of the situation, it's just simply not the case. And I've gone over this before. This is not new. And if you listen to every word we say, we appreciate that very much, but you're going to get a rehash here because this is something that we've talked about in the past. You were not going to get Arch Manning, period. Mm-hmm. You were not going to get Eli Holstein, period. This is a kid who transferred high schools to stay away from Walker Howard. Like, he was not coming here. That's two of the top five. You had no chance. You were not going to get Jaden Osbury. If he wanted to come to LSU, he'd come to LSU. He's been here his entire life. His dad's worked here his entire life. Like, that's that's a guy who, there is no recruiting pitch to Jaden Osbury. It's, hey, you want to come? You got a scholarship. You know everything about this place. They weren't going to get him. He's a top 10 player in this class. Tackett Curtis had decided by the time that Brian Kelly landed here that he didn't care about LSU. He wasn't going to come here. So you start to look through, and, and you're not really missing much. I mean, Derek Williams is committed to Texas, and he's the second-ranked player in the state, and that sucks. Um, and look, Amarian Miller is a guy that you had committed, and now he's going to Nebraska. Like, he's in the top 11 in the state via 247. But, like, th- they're in really good shape to get the rest of these guys. Everybody thinks that Zalance Heard is the guy that LSU is going to reel in. They've got Caleb Jackson, um, the, the running back from here, in Baton Rouge. They've got Tyree Adams committed, who's a top 15 player in the state. Like, the rest of the guys on the board, they're in really good shape for And We'll talk about the biggest one here in a second um, with, with Shelton Sampson. But, like, there was a situation where the state only produces X amount of LSU-worthy players. In this case, maybe, you know, 12, 15. And if there are five of them that you have no chance to get, mm-hmm. 
and that leaves you with 10 from the state, you got to fill the rest of the class with guys from outside the state. And they're yeah. going out there and doing that. Yeah. So it just, to me, if you come in, well, he's not from here. Oh, there's two guys committed. Oh, it's like, hold on. Look at the actual facts of the situation. And he hasn't really missed on anybody except Derek Williams. Yeah, I think when you look at the job that A&M did last year recruiting the state of Louisiana, you look at the job Alabama did <laughs> recruiting the state of Louisiana last year, it's going to create a lot of cause for concern for the people uh, in this state. So I, I think anytime you go you know, below 500 in your LSU, uh, you're going to take that lump sometimes. But seeing what Coach Kelly's done without even winning a single game thus far, <laughs> I think it's really impressive. They haven't done anything, and uh, he's done a phenomenal job in, in the rec- uh, transfer portal, and he's doing a phenomenal job recruiting the 2023 class. So uh, I have no concerns to see him doing what he's doing. Uh, I think he's going to continue to get better. Shelton Sampson is the uh, the biggest fish left in the in-state sea, uh, the number three-ranked player by 247 in the state of Louisiana, a five-star prospect from Catholic High. He said over the weekend that his uh, announcement is going to be a week from today, and uh, and all indications are that LSU is in an, an excellent spot for him. That's a guy, Catholic High, Baton Rouge, got to lock it down. Yeah, yeah, definitely do. And I, I think you, you continue to get guys in this area from this state and, and getting that luster and that allure back to LSU and getting that respect back. Uh, it's going to continue to help and build year in after year out. So uh, if we can keep the guys in Baton Rouge, the Tigers, that, that's always great news to me. Samson will announce on Saturday uh, where he is going. Just about everybody anticipates that LSU will be the target there. He is a 6'4", 180-pound, really good athlete from over there at Catholic High. And you know, Catholic High got away from LSU in the 90s. I mean, you had a couple of really good running backs headed to Tallahassee uh, out of Catholic High. You got you to gotta make sure that that's the spot that you – continue to cultivate because they put out some really, really good players over the years. And Shelton Sampson is next in line there. Uh, again, the in- indications are on Saturday that he will choose, uh, he will choose LSU. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what the Bayou 4 chat has to say about my thoughts on the recruiting side of thing. I just, um, that to me was just such a, a, a stretch to kind of lazily take a snapshot and go, Oh, can't really recruit the state. He's just a <laughs> national guy. He's going to try to do it like he did at Notre Dame. Like no one takes this job. No one. Great coach, terrible coach. Anyone that takes this job, not a single person would look and go, yeah, I'm going to try to to, lock, to go get guys in Indianapolis, D.C., and Northern California. <laughs> Everyone knows that this state's got a lot of really good players in it. I, it, just, it's, it's, uh, it's, it just kind of blows my mind. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.